Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another week of the Fogo Life. That's right. As always, I'm your host, Captain Ron. That's what it says on my shirt. Hey, today we are here to answer the age-old steak debate. Is a bone-in steak better than a boneless steak? I've got two nearly identical ribeyes right here, and we're going to figure it out together. How does that sound? We're going to find out, is it juicier? Is it more tender? Does it have different texture? Does it have better flavor? All the myths about a bone-in steak, we're going to answer them today. So I'm excited to get started. I hope that you are too. So let's do that. But before we do, stay tuned to the end of the video because we're going to announce the winner from last week of the Blaze of Ball. That's right. We might even have more giveaways coming. Stay tuned. And today we're starting with two identical ribeye steaks. Well, about as identical as you can get. Now, the bone-in one is much thicker because the bone. I have to work around that. And the eyes are a very similar size. We have the same fat along the outside here. We have the meat along where the bone was. The cap is very, very similar, as well as the same fat on the inside here. So we have two very similar steaks, which is very important when you're doing an experiment to compare them. But I wanted to start with two nearly identical steaks that we can tell in the end is one really better than the other without everybody saying, oh, they're different steaks. No, we started with two really, really similar ones. And that's what we're working with today. Now for the next step, everybody probably thinks I'm gonna light the grill, right? Wrong. What I'm gonna do now is season the steaks. We want them seasoned and sitting on the counter for at least 20 minutes before we cook them. So we're gonna season them up. We're gonna use just kosher salt for today because we want them very similar. We wanna taste that steak. We want that flavor of the steak to shine through so we know which one's better, right? So we're gonna season them up. I'm also gonna tie them so that they cook more evenly. So let's go ahead and get started on that, shall we? A lot of people may be asking, why are we gonna tie a steak? Because if you look at a ribeye, it has so much fat in it that it can kind of really come apart like that. What we wanna do is we wanna tie it, make it uniform in thickness, and hold it together so that when it cooks, it won't have that problem. So we're just gonna wrap the string around the outside. And we're gonna wrap this one, two, three times, and pull. That'll hold it tight while we tie the last knot. One more single knot, and it's done. Now, cut off the extra or it'll just burn up. For a cowboy or a tomahawk steak, we want to wrap the string around the bone using the meat to hold it. Bring it back around the steak so it's double layered and tie it the same way you would the boneless ribeye. Twist it one, two, three times, pull, and then tie one last single knot, same as before, and cut off any extra string to prevent it from burning up. There you have it, two perfectly tied ribeyes. And now that we've got them tied up, we're gonna season them. It's really easy our seasoning today. We're using simple, coarse kosher salt. That's it, nothing else. We might hit it with a little pepper. And in the end, I don't know. We'll see, I don't, we'll see how I feel. How does that sound? That's the beautiful part of cooking. You can do it however you want to. So, but salt is the main ingredient here. We're gonna salt it, a heavy, heavy coat. When you think you've had enough salt, hit it with some more. Okay, a nice solid coating on top. Make sure you get it all over the table like I just did. All right, but make sure it's covered. We want a nice coating, because what's gonna happen, these are gonna sit for about a half hour while, the grill, while we light the grill and bring it up to temperature. The salt is actually gonna draw the moisture up out of the steak. <gasps> we want moisture in our steak, right? By leaving it sit for so long, it's gonna do that. It's gonna grab that salt and pull it back down into the center. So you have a flavorful steak all the way through. So we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Now, a common misconception is that there's too much salt. A lot of this salt will get absorbed into the steak itself. So you won't have to worry about having a salty crust. We don't want salty, crusty steaks now, do we? Now that we're all seasoned, let's light the grill. So as you can see, there's still a bunch of charcoal left. I did a cook yesterday, I have a bunch of charcoal left. There's nothing wrong with this. I don't even really need to add to this because we're gonna have a fairly short cook today, about an hour. So this is plenty of charcoal, but we do wanna clean it out. That's where the kick-ass basket comes in handy. All right, all we do is take it up here and just start shaking. All right, it's called shake that ash. We're gonna shake it all out. What it does is it gets all the ash out, gets all the little bits and pieces out and gives us a nice clean charcoal to start with. Now, as you can see, there's a ton of ash in the bottom here. This is built up. You should clean this out about every two or three cooks, okay? But this is real simple. I'll just pull out my kick-ash can, all right? Put it into this garbage bag right here. And just dump my ashes out. Now, if you don't have a kick-ash can, that's okay. You can use a oh, shop vac, make sure your coals are out. You can use a little scoop. You can use anything you want. I Sometimes I cut a paper plate and just use it to scoop out the ashes. It's real simple, but you always want to clean it out at least every three or four uses. That's for sure. And now that we're all cleaned out, we put our charcoal back in, grab us a couple Fogo fire starters, and let's get this fire lit, shall we? I just drop the all-natural Fogo starters into the blaze ball, click it closed, and it's ready. I like to use my grill torch for easy lighting. It works fast and gets the charcoal burning really easily. And once your starters are burning good, you can kind of build a little teepee over it. Let all these coals catch fire. 
Did you see how easy those starters lit up? Well, guess what? Now's your opportunity to own some. We're gonna give away one box of starters to one lucky winner. You have to do a couple things. You have to live in the United States, you have to be subscribed to our channel, you have to like the video and leave us a comment. Any comment, we'll give away one box to one lucky winner next Sunday. While we're cooking these, it's really important to monitor our temperatures. So we're gonna use our meter thermometers, all right? It's a wireless thermometer, this is a probe. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it right into the center of the meat. There's a little line on here that tells you where to insert it to. It's gonna go right in the center. You just push it all the way into that line. We're able to monitor our temperature of the steak the entire time. It's really important because steak cooked at a proper temperature is always a better steak. Hey, just in case you're wondering what we're using here, actually, I didn't want to go crazy and use like prime or wagyu. No, we're using regular choice steaks. They have beautiful little marbling in them. I found the nicest ones I could find. You want to look for thin lines of marbling when you're picking out your steak. That's going to create the most flavor. So when you're looking at it, look at the red part of the steak and try and find as many little red, I mean, white striations in there as you can. That's going to give you a flavorful steak because it's got a lot of internal fat in it. Fat equals flavor. So there. We have our grill running along at a steady 250 degrees. So now on to the next step. You know what the problem with being a vegetarian is? It's a missed steak. <laughs> missed steak. Anyway, we're at 250 degrees. We're rolling along here. So we're going to put our steaks on. We're going to put, obviously, the fat one on first. All right, so putting this on here just like this. I'm putting it towards the back. I'm also putting it with the bone closest to the heat source. The heat comes up around the edges. So I'm putting the bone closest to the heat source because that's the part that takes the longest to cook because it takes the bone a while to heat up. Makes sense, right? So. We'll check on this a little while. Meantime, we're gonna let this one sit a little longer and we'll add it on. This way they're both done at the same exact time. All right, I'm doing this because we're getting closer to eating time. So we're at 90 degrees on our big fat giant ribeye. So I'm gonna take the other one, all right? Put this baby, you notice how all the soak, all the salt absorbed, you can't even see any salt on top. Put that right in the center. They should be done right at about the same time. And we are there, they are at 122 degrees. So let's just double check each one. One, one, twenty, one, one, twenty. We are right there. So we're gonna pull both of these babies off of here with our extra long tongs. You gotta calibrate them first. All right. So we're gonna. Ooh, that's hot. Woo. There's our beautiful cowboy steak. All right. Some people call it tomahawk. I think the tomahawk has a longer bone. And there's our regular ribeye. They don't look like much because we still have to sear them. Our next step to this is we're gonna sear them. Now, you always wanna let your steaks rest, right? Well, the good news when you're doing like this, okay, we're gonna open that grill up, get it really hot, but it's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes. Guess what? That's our resting period. So once we sear them, we can take them right off, slice them and eat them like that because they will have already rested. Pretty cool, right? Now let's get this thing opened up. They're gonna be so much better once they're done. I sincerely mean that. All we have to do, is take out our deflector, okay? I'm gonna take it, put it on the side over here, put it someplace where it's heat proof. We're gonna let this build up. If you look in here, I already have another grate in there. Oh, wow, how smart of that, planning ahead. So I'm gonna leave this wide open, let this fire build up, and we're gonna sear this in about 10 minutes. All right, one thing we gotta do before we sear the steaks, always wanna pull the meters out, okay? You don't want them exposed to super direct heat. They're gonna get real hot, they can't take it. So we wanna do that, take those out, and we're just gonna sear them for about a minute to a minute and a half per side till we have a really nice char on them. The char is the star, the crust is a must. When searing, you know it's hot enough when you hear that sizzle when the steak hits the grate. Take a second, enjoy the flame show. If you're looking for grill marks, rotate the steak 90 degrees after about 30 to 45 seconds. Check to make sure you have the color you're looking for before you flip it over. We don't want a solid black steak, but some black is good. That's flavor, and this one is perfect for me. Just repeat the second side the same way you did the first. Watch for color and make sure you don't go too long. Turn them 90 degrees, the same as the others for steakhouse style grill marks. No burned steaks allowed. The steaks are too high for that. <laughs> anyway, now we take them off and we are ready for, excuse me, sir, your steak is on fire. Okay, there. Now we have my favorite part, the tasting. All right, guys, miraculously, steaks are finished and people show up. How do you know about that? So these are my good friends. My good friend. My name is Abiel. Abiel, nice to see you. And... Abiel Sr. Abiel and Abiel, okay. Obviously father and son. So what we did here, guys, I got two different ribeye steaks. I prepared something differently about them. All I want to do is taste them, see which is your favorite one, okay? Here, hold, you hold that. I think you can so, do that. You think you can do that? All right, good, good, good. You guys aren't opposed to eating steak, are you? No, not at all. No, okay. If you did, it would be a bad mistake. <laughs> mistake. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off the bone. We'll gnaw on this later, all right? I'm going to cut it right in half. So we're cutting it in half. Cut some sections right out of the center here. All right, and we're gonna cut up a couple slices and we'll taste this one first. So grab a fork, Abiel Jr. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
One slice, two slices, three. I'll be able to grab a fork. Cheers, boys. That's really good. That is really good. That is really good. Incredible. Dog with your mouth full? <laughs> That's a good steak right there. Mm. All right, hold on to that. Important part, guys. It was off of this one already. Before you eat it, make sure you take the string off. All right, steak number two. Now, this is actually a boneless ribeye. So we're going to do the same thing. Cut it in half. We're going to cut a section right out of the center. So we're eating the same section. All right. So we got that. And cut it into three. One, two, three. I'll take the center one again. Junior. Cheers. 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 Cheers, Cheers folks. Wow. That's really good, too. Mm -hmm. uh. I don't know about you guys. I don't notice a big difference between the two of them. Do you? Not really, no. Not really, no? What about you? Do you notice any difference? No. The first steak had a little bit more of a smokier feel to it. Okay. All right. Very, very close. Very All right. delicious. Hard to choose one over the other, to yeah. be honest. I'd say texture-wise, I think they were really pretty similar. Yes, I, I right? would agree with that. What do you yeah. think? I have to agree. Very similar? <laughs> so, yeah, I think that the texture on it was really similar. I thought the flavor was really similar, too. I mean, they have the same exact seasoning on them. They have the same exact thing. The only thing, this one cooked a little bit longer because it was a thicker steak. Yeah. So that's really the only difference. Um, do you have a favorite out of the two? Uh, I think my favorite would have to be the first one. The first one? I don't know why. It's just, like, resonates with me a little bit. Probably because it's a bigger piece of meat or yeah. something like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about you? Do you have a, did you, did you find one? Yeah, I'd have to go with the first one as well. First one? Okay. Yep. Um, they were both really good to me. I, I, I'm glad that I don't have to pick one. Um, I'm going to go with them because that majority rules. I thought they were both fantastic. So the whole thing here was that one is a bone-in ribeye and one is a boneless ribeye. The theory has always been that a bone-in is going to give you a better texture, a better mouthfeel, a better flavor. It's going to be a better overall steak. Myself, I didn't notice a discernible difference between the two, enough to make a judgment to say bone-in is better or worse. Could you? Do you think that one had to do with the other? or? Possibly. The other thing is probably seeing the bone now, you expect the better taste. Right. So maybe the next time we'll put blindfolds on. Blindfolds on? on? Okay, <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. Noted. Blindfolds next time. Let's see what Episode two. Let's see what Abielito thinks. Well, I think um, my main decisive factor uh -huh. with comparing the two steaks right. was the size difference because okay. this one's around like two times bigger than that one. Sure. And I think the amount of like Due to the quality being similar, yeah, I think just having their overall quantity there was like Good. the main decisive factor between okay. the two. Fair enough. So, according to the majority rules, the bone-in ribeye was a better ribeye. I don't know if it's uh, if, if if that w I don't know if I concur or not, but I think that they were both fantastic. Let's put it this way: I wouldn't say no to either one. Would you? No. No, I didn't think so. Oh, and one more thing: winner from the giveaway from last week for the Blazer Ball. The winner is at Ian Coffee Three. Ian Coffee Three. So Ian. Congratulations, you won yourself a blaze ball. All right, don't forget, we have a contest going this week for a packs of fire starters, so go ahead, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel. And that's everything we got, folks. The steak test, I would say, was a success. We're going to get to eating the rest of this. Guys, thanks so much for showing up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us. All right, remember to get out and grill, and we'll see you next time on the Fogo Life. Captain Ron, 